Sorry. It's a good drift, that. All right, where are we thinking for the garrisons then? Um. Uh, F5. What you need? I can hear something. Nothing. I just said. Ah! My squad comms have gone down. I think. If you asked me what my favourite game is on PC that I play at the moment, people might think it's Rome Total War, maybe. I've said that's one of my favourite games. Age of Empires, I've said that's one of my favourite games of all time. Maybe even Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, since I've made a lot of videos on that. Even something like Chivalry 2, which has just come out and it's still got all the hype going for it. It is such a fun game, but none of these are actually my favourite game. There's been one game throughout the last few years that I have played to death that I adore every time I load up, that I I have the best experience, but I don't really post on the channel that much. And that would be Hell Let Loose. Hell Let Loose is probably one of my favorite games of all time. The World War II 50 versus 50 battles, communication between troops, captains, commanders, fighting for power and control of different points on such varied and incredible maps. Unless it's Hurtgen Forest, then you can you can leave, please. But we've been waiting in Hell Let Loose for something to be announced. Something for quite some time. You see, there's been hints and been some updates and some developer blogs about a new faction, a new country coming into the realms of World War II, and that would be the Soviets. The partisan charge going into battle with the might of the Russian motherland behind you, fighting in the cobbled streets of Stalingrad. It was all coming soon. But we didn't know when it would be released. We didn't have any sort of release date announced at that point in time. But because of E3, it comes with some special things. Oh, this E3, whilst disappointing, did have some fun bits. Hidden in the nooks and crannies that unless you search them out you might have missed and one of them was Hell Let Loose announcement that it'll be releasing as a full game coming out of early access on July 27th. You see whilst Hell Let Loose is a very fleshed out and really content heavy game at this point in time it's still in early access and has been for the last year or so but on July 27th along with a full game we'll be getting the Soviet forces as well with all new tanks, weaponry, troops, gameplay styles you'll also get two new maps, Kursk and Stalingrad, and my do they look fantastic. Not only for what we've seen from developer blogs in the past, but with this announcement we got an awesome new trailer showing bits of gameplay from the new maps, and my do they look brutal. Urban Warfare is one of the strong parts of Hell Let Loose. Fighting in buildings, positioning yourselves in attics and windows, trying to protect points and courtyards, and it's only going to get even more intense in a map like Stalingrad. Fighting in that hotel, shooting from the windows, and trying to protect your motherland from the oncoming slaughter of the Germans. One of the most brutal battles of World War II is coming to hell let loose. And I think it is the perfect game in order to honour that. You see, Hell Let Loose is different. If you played a game like Squad or Postscriptum, or maybe even Armour to some extent, you'll have an idea of what type of game it is. It's not your Call of Duty, it's not really even your Battlefield, and whilst it is more casual than something like a Squad or Postscriptum, it has that squad play, where working together is key. There's no one-man armies. You have to use the right tactics and strategy in order to, well, beat out your enemy, and it gives that realistic World War II feeling. And I think from maps like Kursk or Stalingrad, there couldn't be a better game game for it to fit into. There was also a reveal at E3 that Hell Let Loose will be coming to the next gen consoles. Now, we did know that Hell Let Loose will be coming to consoles at some time in the future. However, it is now confirmed that it'll be on PS5 and Xbox Series S and X. And if you're a console player, that's fantastic. That's great. I think the more people that get their hands on this game, the better, because it is really something special when it comes to gameplay. However, there's an issue. You see, Consoles are fantastic. They're your great casual gamer's utility belt. Being able to just plug it in and play. Or at least that's what they used to be. However, you see that casual community around consoles still stays around, even though the console isn't really the casual gaming station it once was. But a game like Hell Let Loose will be interesting to see how it fits onto something like this. You see, as I mentioned, the main part of it is communicating with teams. You have different squads, whether it's infantry, armor, or recon. And in this squad, you have all your roles, but also you have captains of each squad. These captains can talk and order their squad, placing down outposts and garrisons of the such, but also talk to the top commander and other captains of other squads in different voice chats in order to make strategies and go about to win the game. This guy hiding behind that rock keeps poking his knee out. Uh, oh, he's dead. Yeah. Uh, 
Accurate. That's not nice. I'm moving you back. Bomb run. Is that coming for us? No. No, yeah. it's going down the main road. Man, that was a good hit on tank. Oh, that tank's nearly down. So. Oh. Uh, I don't know if he's still standing, but he looked like he took. He's a just about hit. still up. No, yeah, yep. he's oh, yeah, just about still up. So nearly dead. This works fantastic on PC because of the audience that it really draws in. People that play on PCs are sometimes the more hardcore gamers. They're sometimes the ones that maybe want to even roleplay, but definitely work together. Use those strategies and how at least works fantastically in this medium. But I'm not sure it will work that way in a console medium. A more casual market, where a game that is so focused around squad gameplay and working as a team and not one-man armies on a platform that is most famous for Call of Duty and Battlefield, where one-man armies are, you know, quite a big part of that. As someone that does own a console but never really plays on it, I don't know if I'm that experienced to see how the console community is at this point in time in 2021. So if you're out there and you mainly play on consoles, what are your thoughts? Do you think that this game could move? And do you think the medium of a more casual gaming console would work with a more hardcore and squad-based game? Because personally, I'm not sure that would work. However, despite the exciting news of the full release of Howl Let Loose and of course the maps Cursed and Stalingrad with the Soviet forces there are some things that i think need addressing in hell let loose and it's a lot of feedback that's come from this announcement everybody is incredibly happy they're making new content everyone is incredibly happy that this game is expanding and getting bigger and bigger but there are major issues that haven't really been addressed by the developers and one of the main thing is optimization making this accessible to a wider audience because currently unless you have a beast of a pc you're going to be playing on the lowest graphic details and that does affect your game things don't load in bushes and trees fields are a massive part of taking cover and using strategy to get across the open plains of maps like Omaha or St. Marie. People playing on lower graphic settings do actually have an advantage, but they don't have a choice. The game isn't optimized well, so they can't play at higher graphic settings. They can't have this level playing field that everyone needs in order to make it a well-balanced game. One of my mates, James, has a 1080 in his computer. And granted, it is an old 1080 and it's kind of dying, but he's fine most of the time playing this game. But we mostly play as the recon squad, me as the spotter and him as the sniper and when he goes to zoom in with specifically the german sniper scope he gets massive frame drops because it hasn't been optimized to work that way it tries to render the whole map and because the german sniper zooms in way more than the american sniper it renders way too much and starts chugging any pc that isn't the top line level i mean i'm absolutely fine i'm able to play in 4k and getting about 100 fps solid most of the time but that's with a 3090 it shouldn't be like that this game should be optimized to be able to play with five, six hundred pound computers because that's what most people have. And whilst I'm incredibly excited for this full release and for what Team 17 are really doing with this game, there needs to be some addressing of the issues that are still here. I think expanding content is fantastic for keeping people playing, but the game needs to be accessible to the point where people want to come back. Because this is my favorite game, I want as many people to be as playing it as possible, to keep it alive, to keep those games as fun as they are. But I'm sure there are many people watching this and please leave a comment if you are one of these people that can't have an enjoyable time. Not only a not enjoyable time, but maybe not even be able to play the game at all because of how badly this is optimized. And whilst more content is fantastic, there are still some issues at home that need to be addressed. But please let me know what you think. Are you looking forward to this new expansion? And with Curse and Stalingrad, which map are you most looking forward to playing? I know for me, it's definitely Stalingrad, but please leave your comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. But until then, I will see you in the next one.